I'm here with Dr. Leonard Sweet. Len is the E. Stanley Jones Professor of Evangelism at Drew University, Visiting Distinguished Professor at George Fox University, and Distinguished Visiting Professor at Tabor College. He is a best-selling author, has published more than 60 books and 1,500 sermons, and is widely in demand as a speaker here in the U.S. and around the world. A year ago, he launched a story-based preaching website called PreachTheStory.com. He has two books coming out in 2016, Jesus Speaks and The Bad Habits of Jesus. Thank you very much, Len, for joining us today. It's good to be with you. As you know, Frederick Buechner will soon be turning 90 years old. Is there anything you would like to wish him for this great milestone? Well, I just wish him to, that we can do this again uh, 10 years from now. and and celebrate um, a, a truly great centenarian. Um, he's one of the people that has impacted, I think, both both wings of the church, the left wing and the right wing, uh, immeasurably. And, um, and I, I just want to say thank you and celebrate him. And that's why I'm doing this, to, to honor and to um, say how much I revere him. Well, thanks very much, Len. I'm sure that Mr. Beekman will greatly appreciate hearing from you. Next, can you tell me how you first learned of his work? Yeah, I was a student at the University of Richmond, um, and um, I learned there of, uh, I majored in, in history and psychology, but um, I, I discovered there this uh, man named Frederick Beekner, just in part of my peripheral reading, and um, the, the Magnificent Defeat is, I think, the first one that, that I read, and then I just started reading everything I could, The, the Hungering Dark, and, and um, just from then on, it was just, when is another Beekner book coming out? And it was very important to me, because I was... In a stage of kind of my uh, deconversion that I had kind of deconverted from Christianity and was studying Marxism and Maoism and and um, just all sorts of really thought I thought I was an atheist in some ways but but Beekner got me uh, thinking again about theology about God and and um, hooked me again on returning to um, to classic. Christian resources and sources, and and so that that um, it was a college student that first uh, first encountered him. What would you say most attracts you to Mr. Beekner's writing? Um, well, here it, it was not just his writing; it was who he was. I mean. Here was a Presbyterian minister who didn't have a church. And I figured this is, maybe he did, I just didn't know about it. But I had him living on a farm, and, and I always thought of him like Fred Rogers, these two people that really didn't fit into the Presbyterian system, so they had to make special categories for them. And, and I knew if I ever was to return to the church, I wasn't going to fit in either. And, and so here were two that had done it. Um, they have managed to find a place for themselves within the church, yet not of the church. And so that was hugely significant for me, um, just the witness of, of him as a writer. I also was attracted to the fact that he was um, a polymath. I mean, here's somebody who wrote poetry, who wrote nonfiction, who wrote fiction, who wrote essays, who wrote miscellanies, and I, I just didn't want to write one thing either. I, I was interested in, in uh, doing all of that. And um, and playing with all of that, so that was another huge, um, huge attraction for me. And I think that the third thing was um, Dr. Beekner's incredible ability to to take a, a metaphor and then to weave a story around. And um, and I had. I love words, and I always will love words, but I realized that we were in a new culture where the primary communication was not words, but it was metaphors and narratives. And um, Frederick Buechner was, for me, the master in the church of taking a metaphor and, um, and spinning around it a little narrative, which is basically the G method of communication. And I believe Jesus was the greatest communicator who ever lived. 
and it amazed me that why weren't more people writing and communicating as he communicated, and here was one that did. His name was Frederick Buechner. So you've written so many things, Len. Is there anything of your specific writing that you would say has been inspired by Mr. Buechner? Well, yeah, well, genres, a couple of genres. I, I really have written a novel, and I'm working on two novels right now, but my first novel, I don't think I would have written it without uh, the book of Beeb and Godric and his inspiration that you can be a great essayist and, and a nonfiction writer and also be a fiction writer. So I think he gave me the courage to do that. The other thing was I loved his his miscellanies and, and you know uh, wishful thinking and the ABC. And I did um, the language of the emerging church and I just did an alphabet like he did, but it was not um, an alphabet of, of theological kinds of words that I thought that we would be speaking and talking about in the 21st century. Um, so yeah, so a couple of a couple of books like that. Uh, I think he really, I'm not sure I would have done unless he really excited me and agitated me and and, um, and gave me the courage to do it. That's really great. So more broadly speaking, what influence would you say that Mr. Beekner has had on Christianity and the world at large? Well. Uh, I wish he had had more. I mean, he had immense influence, but um, I wish it. He he brought both the right and the left together in this in this narrative. These narratives that he would tell that that weren't um, that weren't overtly political. It had political dimensions, but they weren't overtly political. And and um, so he he had a tremendous way of showing me that there was another way forward about playing the right or playing the left. It was. It was just through the use of through great storytelling or around a metaphor. I, I also he brought beauty into into the life of of um, the mind and the life of faith. And so much Christian writing is just bland and boring, and and it's even worse with a blogosphere now. I I, I call I get bloggeria so much because I, I just is the writing is just so awful, and Beekner's writing is beautiful and it's elegant and it's joyous and it's it's deep and simple at the same time. And there's this this aesthetics that um, I, I wish, and that's why I hope even the future discovers more Beekner and less because it will. The ultimate apologetics for this culture is an aesthetics and. And it's all about the beauty, the beauty of Jesus, the beauty of life, the beauty of what it means to be human, and all of that beauty and truth and goodness that that are wrapped into one bundle. Um, I found it to be, and in contrast to so much of church writing, is just um, just the bland leading the bland, and 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 Beekner came with beauty, and um, so I I'm hoping that more people in the future discover Beekner than even have in the past. And I'm doing the best, that, all that I can. I teach in, in all different wings of the church, from Pentecostalism to the main line, old line, side line, whatever. And, and I'm, I'm heavy read Beekner, some of my first, first words out of my mouth. So I realize this next question is difficult, but if you were to sum up Fred in a few words, what would you say? I, 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 add, I put two things together, a master wordsmith and image smith, um, a wordsmith and image smith. He knew how to craft words and he, he would play, it seemed like he'd play with words and play with phrases until they purred like a kitten. He just would pet them and play with them until they were just... Uh, perfect. I mean, they would purr. But then he also, um, it wasn't just about these words and the way he put words together, it was also the, the way in which he's, he, he, he built these words out of, but they were all based on images. And he crafted images. He exegeted images. And this culture doesn't hear words. It only hears images now. And so I see Wigner as really a bridge between the Gutenberg and the Google world, that he could do both. He could do the wordsmithing that the Gutenbergers got to have, but then he also 
showed us how to do image smithing and to, to, to present truth and goodness and, in this beautiful form of images and how to use images. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd be here today if he had not said that doubt was the ants in the pants of faith. And it kept your faith alive because you kept pitching at it and, and uh, rubbing it and going back to it. I, wow. I mean, that was like a revelation to me. I mean, the, so the image of doubt, not making a case for it with words, but just ants in the pants of faith. Oh. And uh, so I, I would say a master wordsmith and image. So is there anything else that you'd like to say before we conclude, Len? No, just uh, great being with you. I, I feel really uh, blessed by his presence in my life. I've never met him. I heard him once uh, speak, but I never went up to meet him. I just was one of those shy people that sat in the back row. Um, but I, um, I really feel blessed and a different person because of of Frederick Buechner. Um The two Freds, Presbyterian Freds even. From Methodist, this is hard to say, Brian, but the two <laughs> Presbyterian Freds. Fred Rogers and Fred Buechner, that that brought me in some ways back into the church. 